what is on each computer is the same. Each computer we give to you comes with about one or two overseas containers full of books and videos, but it's electronically stored on, on each laptop. So um, what we did, we collected from oer to go from Rachel Academy, from several um, places in internet, you can download this content. We improved it a little bit that it can be easier accessed by, by web browser. And if you have a look on all these topics, this is just the English. This is just the English information. There are children books for Africa. There are computer courses. Uh, just to jump here into the Rachel collection, you have Wikipedia for schools. You have about 2,000 videos in English for mathematics and science. You have med medical information. You have information for rural areas, uh, how to optimize plants. Um, animals, um, environment, uh, you have a lot of information for the children as well. Um, you have computer um, manuals also coming with, with each computer. And um, you have, for instance, in Germany, you have, um, for, to, for, to support the integration work, you, we have uh, German mathematics courses because a lot of immigrants and children, they lack, have a lack of mathematics knowledge. Uh, we have a website Deutsch als Fremdsprache from a Swiss association also mirrored to each computer. And we have about 100 lessons um, German in Arabic. It's from a student in Dortmund. And this is also offline on each computer plus um, two PDFs, two books with about 80 pages uh, for um, German classes. In Spain the same. In Spanish, we have uh, here Rachel in, in Espanol, uh, which is also coming uh, with each Spanish image. And this is about half of the size of the English one, but still very impressive. It's a lot of information. You have a complete uh, bibliotheca of Latino America. Uh, you have uh, from the National Library from Guatemala information and so on. And the same in French. Uh, you have uh, Wikipedia, Selection pour l'école. Sorry, my French is not the best. I am sure a few of the, uh, the attendees can speak it much better. Um, we have here, for instance, from a Congolese artist, Marie Vavis. Vavis? I'm not sure. We have uh, here children books in uh, French from a Congolese artist also coming with it. Uh, chat et chien, dog and cats, and so on. A lot of information. Uh, the electronic library of Quebec is completely here, and so on. So we collect this, and I think besides that we do an impressive work with laptops, but that is just the smaller part. The major impact is done by uh, enabling the users with the software to join the digital work to have access. And even if there is no internet connection, they still have access to a lot of online content. This was only part of the work we're doing. There's another tool on it, which is called Xova. And Xova is offering you about 806 uh, wikis. Wikipedia, Wikibook, Wikidictionary, and so on. You know them when you run it in internet. But now they are locally on, on each machine. They are stored on each computer. So you have the complete English uh, wiki, the complete French, Spanish, but also um, in tribal languages. So if you have, um, there are some, some jokes, wikis, uh, funny wikis like Klingonian languages from, from Star Trek, that is, doesn't make sense, of course. But um, when you have, uh, you have rural areas and you talk Swahili or Igbo or I don't know what, what language is important for your users. We can also put these uh, wikis on the machines if it is available. Not all communities, not all uh, languages uh, support that. But you have uh, the opportunity at least uh, to go here through a lot of big languages. But if you, uh, there's Sosa, Zulu, Wolof, uh, Asian languages, Turkmen, and so on, Albanian languages. So it's not just for, for the large communities. 
Okay, one last feature, then I will uh, stop. Uh, very often we are used, uh, we are asked why you don't use uh, Windows. Be there are several reasons. Speed, we get older computer donated because they are running slowly using Windows. So using Linux, we have about two or three times the user speed on the system. Another thing is um, security. Um, maybe you can confirm in, in Africa, you go to an internet cafe, use your uh, USB stick, and then you have a virus on it and you plug it into a school computer and it will blow up and you have to reinstall Windows. This cannot happen using uh, Linux. It is, uh, com it cannot be infected by any virus. So this is a very safe system. And everything you see is free. So we don't talk about license, about um, violating any, any legal rights. That is, uh, that is also um, one of the reasons. But you are able to run Windows in a virtual machine. So each computer, when you cloned an image, then VirtualBox is part of, um, of uh, the installation. And of course, the computer has to have enough memory, the CPU has to be fast enough, you have to have the disk capacity free for a Windows installation. But if so, um, okay, mistyped, um, but if you, if you uh, are able to install Windows, you can run it. Or you can also install other operating system as, as guest operating system, as virtual machines. And that is a, a very easy way uh, to extend the opportunity. So if a school really has to use Windows, you don't have to remove Linux, just add the operating system you use. And if this is infected by viruses, you just install a new machine. The rest can be stay as it is. So um, with Windows, you get all the disadvantages, of course, as well. So it can be infected by virus, uh, speed, etc. But just to let you know, uh, Linux does not mean you have to stay only with Linux. You can add Windows in addition. That's no problem. But you have to have a license, etc. Okay, we have more than enough time to go into details tomorrow. This is um, just to give you an idea what is coming with, uh, with the installed system because it is important for me that it is not uh, just giving a laptop to a school. It is much, much more. Uh, because you have your complete library. We have uh, schools during the day, the children are using it. In the evening, the family uh, is coming, especially in rural areas, and they get uh, information. They are very often they are an, an alphabet, they cannot write or read. So they get training with this system as well. It's not just for the children, it's also for um, underdeveloped areas or rural areas worldwide. Thank you. Okay. So let me check. Uh, next is Kais, yes. So I nearly made it. I nearly made it <laughs> within the schedule. Tauschen wir mal. Super. Ähm, möchtet ihr den? Äh, wir, ich denke, wir würden es hiermit probieren. Alles klar. Du musst äh, Videoport entweder mit dem HDMI mhm. oder. Na, probier's mal. Wir versuchen es mal, genau. Darf ich den? Sorry. Wir haben zwei. Ich glaube, ich, glaub, ich bleibe einfach beim Punkt. Alles klar. Ja, alles scheint jetzt zu klappen. So just to introduce KAIS, it is a research institute. Um, Tim Fenner will explain about the institute itself and what they offer and what they do doing. And the two students, Tim, uh, Niels and Frederick, uh, they have um, 
In Malawi, they have uh, run several school supports or school projects. In the beginning, they um, generated computer donations for themselves, and we learned about each other one and a half year ago, one year ago. Yeah. yeah. And since then, we are delivering the computer to you, which makes the work much easier for you. Uh, and they are uh, reporting about the experience they made in Malawi, uh, what kind of social impact uh, we did. That is the idea of this contribution. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ralph, and uh, good morning from my side as well. And thanks a lot for this invitation, Ralph. Thank you for giving us the chance to present the Center for Advanced Internet Studies as well as Next Generation Africa to you today. Um, well, what is the Center for Advanced Internet Studies? We are a research institute and we want to contribute to the main goal of understanding chances and risk of digitalization. How do we do that? Well, our um, major thing is to give money to brilliant ideas. And we have such a brilliant idea right here. You will he uh, learn about that in uh, a couple of minutes. And um, we support ideas through money, through um, non-material support um, that we think are very helpful for bringing society and the chances and risks of digitalization together. Well, what is the center? Yeah, we are um, born out of a cooperation of um, five renowned institutions, um, amongst others, the local university of Duisburg-Essen, as well as the University of Bochum, where we are based. Bochum, for those of you who don't know where Bochum is, it's just a 20 minute train right from here. So if you are around in this area, please come over and visit us. I'll be happy to meet you in our offices and um, show you around. Um, well, these are some of the largest and most renowned universities in um, Germany. So we have a very um, large background where we can rely on. We are funded by the state government of um, this state, North Rhine-Westphalia, quite complicated to uh, spell, but um, yeah, we are funded for five years and we want to give this money to brilliant ideas. And so this is my um, suggestion to you, if you have such a brilliant idea to bring like um, technicians, society together, um, please apply for funding at the center for advanced internet studies. Um, well, just some more information. Um, well, our main goal is to bring scientists and professionals from um, practi practical fields together. And um, we provide funding in three different categories. That is, um, number one, the fellowships. That's uh, what we did with uh, my two friends over here. Uh, we supported them um, financially and we gave them an office as well as an apartment in Bochum to focus completely on the project on the, uh, their project. Um, we do also support projects um, like workshops, conferences, um, events, smaller workshops. So we have a wide range of support for um, brilliant ideas. And what ideas do we support? Well, we are only one and a half year old, but um, in the last couple of months, we had some very good um, examples. One of um, these examples is right here. You will hear about that in a second. Um, some other examples are um, two fellows, um, one from the Oxford Internet Institute and one from Gezes, a um, social study institute in Cologne. Um, they focused on um, online populism, right-wing online populism in the, um, well, during the elections last year. And another um, fellow from Brazil, she focused on, well, the um, occupation movement and cyber activism. So it's a quite diverse range of topics we support, not only like um, um, issues of, um, well, um, aid or development, but um, the whole range, so to say, of digitalization. As I said, we also support like conferences, events, summer schools. Here are some more examples. Um, for example, a workshop on 
computational social science or a public discussion on the election campaign last year, as well as a summer school on usable security and privacy, um, and this symposium you see there on the slide. So as I said, it's really a quite range. So if you have a good idea, you think that might suit, um, I need financial support, please feel free to contact me. I'm happy um, to help you and um, I'm looking forward to as many applications as we can get. Um, just one last slide, I don't want to steal very much time from this actual project from my friends here, um, but, but just um, to sum this up, um, we do not only support like projects through financial support, um, but also we support the dialogue between science, between our universities as partners and uh, society. So how do we do that? Uh, for example, through our small colloquia or fellow dinners where we can, in an informal area, discuss certain topics of digitalization, as well as um, we support networking and matchmaking. So if you think I or you have the idea that you need, for example, an IT security expert, we are happy to help to get you into contact with other um, other professionals from other disciplines. Um, we also have this KAIS forum, which is a local, uh, well, a forum for local citizens in Bochum, a larger conference um, which took place twice. And well, um, within the next couple of months, we will publish uh, some studies where we will focus on the projects we supported. Um, well, we are about to set up our information desk right over there after um, our talk here. So if you have any other questions or if you want to um, learn more about the Center for Advanced Internet Studies, please feel free to come forward to us and we're happy to um, answer all of your questions. But now I'll give the floor to Niels and Freddy. Um, this is one of the projects we supported, one of our first projects, but one of our um, most interesting projects, I think. And um, please, present your, your ideas. Thank you. All right, so also good morning from our side. Uh, just to make clear, my name is Niels, this is Fred, and we are very happy to present you today how the Center for Advanced Internet Studies and also LabDo enabled us to improve education in Malawi. And our project is called Digital Libraries in Malawi. And we will get a little bit into detail what exactly we did and how the impact was on site. So let's get started. So first of all, we'll get into the background in Malawi itself. So how's the situation there? Um, it's a country in the southeast of Africa, a very poor country and one of the least developed uh, worldwide. So um, they deal with a lot of challenges and also especially in the educational sector. We will come to this later on. But also we are here on a yeah, digitization conference, I would say. And uh, therefore we also have to look at the um, digital indicators. And Malawi is also well below the average of um, yeah, mobile access in sub-Sahara Africa. And uh, internet is also very expensive, so you can imagine that the average mobile costs are monthly 12 US dollars, but the average income is only 25. So there you can see it's very, very expensive for the standards there. So um, looking at the educational uh, challenges we see at the schools, the schools are overcrowded and they especially also deal with the severe lack of educational material. They often have no books and uh, they only teach with uh, chalk and talk. This is how the uh, students and teachers in Malawi call it. So they only have um, the teacher monologue and the blackboard to convey knowledge. Uh, and to give you a picture of how this looks like, um, this is uh, how the books uh, looked at one school we visited. There we only had three books for a year of 150 girl students at the um, girl boarding school. And I think you all can imagine how difficult uh, this is for teachers to teach and for students to learn. So um, we thought that uh, this challenge could be counteracted with digital means. 
But another th thing we also experience at the schools there is that some already have computers donated from projects, but they don't really use them because they have no use of them. They have no internet connection, um, they are full with viruses, and um, they also don't have educational material on them. So we thought this potential could be used and we could counterfeit the shortage of education material with digital means. And how we did this, you will hear from Fred. <laughs> So uh, the, th the three goals that uh, come from this uh, background, from this problem uh, for this project are, for one, uh, counteracting the shortage of um, educational materials, but we also, we, we wanted to support teaching and learning with this and, uh, by the way, also enhance digital literacy, which is something that the students uh, can use in their, um, uh, in their life after school, even at university. And so th these three goals we wanted to um, achieve by using affordable and locally adapted ICTs. Um, we called this uh, whole concept digital libraries and here's where a lot of uh, lab to laptops made this possible. So this is where um, uh, students and teachers can, uh, can view the content and we also accompanied the technical part with pedagogical, me pedagogical measures and uh, social measures to allow sustainability and all of that was realized by um, our organization which you see on the right uh, on the left, Next Generation Africa, and on the right, um, uh, the Center for Advanced Internet Studies, as you've already heard, and also the um, Ministry of Economic Affairs of the uh, State of Hessen. Um, those were the uh, partners who funded the project. Now, let's get uh, into uh, the pilot schools or where we actually did this. Um, there were three schools at the beginning, a fourth one has just joined. Um, they are in the, mostly in the north of the country and they are all very rural schools but they do have some uh, differ differences, for example in size um, we have two boarding schools and one day school and um, also a, a boys school, a girls school and a mixed school. So this, uh, these are the project sites and the technology basically um, works as you see it in the uh, diagram above. So we have a server with different uh, d educational materials saved on it and um, through a network that we um, uh, installed at the schools, uh, different devices can, can use that material and the lab to laptops come in here. This is where um, a lot of lab to laptops really helped um, to realize this project. Now let's look at the technical implementation in a bit more detail. Um, we installed this library box, is what we call the server. Uh, at each school, we uh, set up a network and through that network these uh, devices could um, retrieve the information and we equipped schools with lab to laptops uh, with projectors as well um, we had uh, also teachers could use their smartphones in addition um, but uh, more and more lab to laptops are coming for example just uh, in a few days we will have uh, the next set of 12 laptops going to one school which they are very excited about already and um, uh, we also set up a digital library room, so a room where schools can actually, uh, where classes can go to do their digital lessons. Um, and uh, additionally, staff rooms were equipped with PC, so this was a sort of the, the, the technical um, uh, aspect and how we uh, made this really a, a useful um, uh, means of uh, digital learning. Um, so these are some few pictures of how this looks in, in, in practice. So you see the lap to laptops right there and uh, the maze uh, uh, in the background on the left picture. Um, and they are frequently used for group work, for um, uh, homework and so on. So students also use those laptops outside the lesson to um, look for the information that they need to research, do research on topics that they're interested in. Now, this technical implementation is uh, not enough, is what we thought. We need a, a social um, aspect to that as well, so it needs to be accompanied by social actions that allow sustainability. Um, we initiated the project on the request of the schools and we planned and uh, conducted it uh, with them and we also cooperated with um, many others around the schools who were important for the for the school's social system for example the traditional authority here the, the chief um, or a school management committee parents teacher uh, teachers association um, who helped us embed the project in the social system um, and looking at the school level um, we also used existing social structures so to speak 
Um, for example, there are prefects at the schools, um, so those are students who are responsible for certain areas, and we, now we have digital library prefects. We also had champions, so expert teachers, for example, and they are now leading it at the schools, um, which is uh, quite successful, and we're in very frequent contact with them. Um, for example, uh, ap apart from that, um, of course, we also wanted to create skills and allow that uh, schools to, to have the capacity to actually lead this project um, on their own. And all those social measures, uh, as I said, helped us embed the project in the social system. But now we also, apart from the schools and the regional level, we need some sort of um, actor that can, can help uh, manage the whole project as a whole in the country. So we're now working with Chancellor College, um, a constituent of the University of Malawi. Um, and their IT department, and they are now uh, managing the project there. They've already helped us with um, workshops and so on, but they also will now help us uh, uh, accompany the schools and, and, and manage whatever uh, is going on on the ground. Um, now, uh, connected to the social implementation, as I already said, is a capacity building, skill building, pedagogic uh, measures. Uh, so we already expected teachers to have um, pedagogic measure, uh, knowledge or content knowledge, but the techn technological knowledge is important. So the skills of um, using the technology as a supplement to the existing classroom activities, to the existing um, habits of teaching that they have. And uh, for that, we conducted an intensive workshop with teachers. We had um, continuous uh, follow-up training sessions for students and teachers, which, which are now um, carried on by Chancellor College. and. Um, we uh, have a certain structure of problem solving so that everyone knows where to get uh, answers for their problems, for example, through a user guide, which they can refer, refer to, um, to the champions and prefects who are responsible at the schools, but also a local technician who can come in um, from outside. And here you can see, for example, one of our workshops there. Um, and this is really one thing that we found, and we will see that in a second again, uh, very important is the, uh, to build skills actually to allow the schools to use this effectively. This is actually something that is um, highly important and crucial for sustainability because otherwise um, they don't have the skill to use this in, in day to day uh, teaching and learning. Now, uh, after implementing this project, we evaluated it. We conducted um, over 900 uh, questionnaires uh, and some uh, interviews also, qualitative interviews with the experts. And um, we basically wanted to know how, how useful is this uh, to the schools and uh, what aspects of the project were um, useful or not useful, how did this actually affect uh, the schools and, and, and their learning and teaching. Um, there are diff many different uh, comments, for example, from qualitative parts of the questionnaire. Um, for example, um, it has uh, helped us a lot in, in, in lessons starting from preparation to delivery, so they can also prepare lessons but also uh, present digital materials which is useful to them. So um, many of these, uh, these things are similar answers, but we will see in a second uh, a summary of those. Uh, all those answers in the in the evaluation. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not over yet. <laughs> um, so we will uh, go a little bit more into detail what really we experienced on ground and what are the uh, evaluation conclusions. So uh, we found out that in general um, the feedback was very very positive, and teachers and students said that they. Uh, really, the technology helped them a lot to um, teach and learn. It simplified the lessons. Uh, additionally to this, they also um, said that they learned a lot of uh, technological skills um, through uh, the uh, workshop itself, or, but also just by using the technology, of course. And um, they regularly used the technology in and outside the lesson. So this, I think, can also uh, be seen as success of the project. Um, and also that is useful for the students. But on the other side, of course, we are um, also very much interested into um, uh, ways how we can improve the project. And this was also why we conducted this evaluation at the Center for Advanced Internet Studies, um, because we thought we continuously want to improve um, uh, our concept. And uh, what we found out is um, that, that uh, the technology we used uh, should be a little bit more user-friendly because um, some students come from very rural backgrounds 
and they never used a computer before. So uh, the interface has to be very intuitive, so um, they don't need a lot of practice to get started and to learn. Um, and another thing we learned is um, that uh, also students and teachers sometimes need a little bit more guidance. I think this goes in the same direction. Um, then uh, electricity and internet supply uh, is of course a challenge. Um, uh, the content was, uh, was of course provided offline, um, but still for updates, for example, uh, internet supply is still needed and also electricity uh, is a challenge uh, due to all the regular blackouts. Um, then uh, we found out that uh, the content is useful, but uh, they wanted much more content. <laughs> and they especially also wanted content that is um, perfectly adapted to the Malawian curriculum and give them uh, good guidance. And this is uh, one of the uh, things we have to work on now and something that we experience. Yeah, so uh, to come to the conclusion of our evaluation, um, in uh, general, can we say it was a success, um, but uh, besides the technology, we also need other measures to um, improve the learning and improve the teaching. Um, and uh, therefore, social and pedagogic measures are required, and uh, we think that also the content is highly relevant um, for the long-run sustainability and usefulness uh, of technology. Um, yeah, that's uh, what we found out. And uh, in general, uh, we also want to thank again Lab2 that they uh, enabled us to uh, provide the laptops at the schools. We really get regular updates, a lot of pictures uh, from on site. And they are always very amazed uh, also about the content that is stored uh, on the laptops. So thank you again. Um, it was uh, yeah, a great help. And uh, now I hope there's a little bit more time we would also like to answer some of your questions. So thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to talking to you. I'm allowed to answer questions? Yeah, can I move us on? Yeah, thanks a lot. That was a very nice presentation and work. Um, so what's next uh, the, um, for this project? Um, do you get feedback from them after leaving uh, the location? And do you feel like um, they're capable of using the tools uh, going forward? Uh, so feedback, and do you feel like they're, uh, they're able gonna, to, to use the tools going forward? Yeah, okay. Maybe I should have never lost it. Sorry. Okay. All right, um, yeah, so it's a very good question. So what uh, are the future prospects? Um, this was the pilot project we um, conducted here and we learned a lot of, um, from, from this project and all took it back to the Center for Advanced Internet Studies and we are now working on the improvement of the interface to make it more user friendly. And another thing we uh, are now actively working on is the content itself. So uh, to really adapt it to the Malawian curriculum and uh, to give uh, teachers guidance through um, this yeah, technological teaching. Um, and we're working on this together with the Chancellor College in Malawi, so they have um, technological as well as pedagogic um, experience, and I think therefore are uh, well experienced for this task. Um, and in general, uh, there are some other schools which are interested in the technology, um, and uh, there are several in Malawi and also beyond, uh, and we would like to yeah, expand this project and yeah, we, we will see about this. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Javier. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your work and also for being here today and all you have uh, told. I think it is very interesting because you have a very good view of what is happening in the end with the laptops and what is, what is uh, necessary with the content and it is very valuable uh, feedback. Uh, my question is, uh, do you think that uh, we can uh, extrapolate uh, this experience also to some other countries or some other languages, the need of uh, to extend the content in which areas we would be, uh, it would be valuable to, to extend the content more in the IT uh, part, uh, so to include some train the trainer content or things like that. Uh, I mean, what is your, uh, your advice for us uh, in the end? Um, yeah, so it's also a very good question. So how should the content look like? And something we experience is that um, teachers in Malawi, at least, 
um, are used to have a clear guidance throughout the lesson. So they always uh, stick very much to the book they have. So uh, the book gives them um, guidance which tasks they give the students and um, which, um, yeah, which topic they will teach in this specific lesson. And I think this is also necessary for the schools in Malawi. And what are we doing right now is because there's a lot of open education resources online um, to try to adapt these ones and to uh, make proper scripts for teachers so that uh, these guide the teachers um, through a whole year, so to speak. Um, and uh, I think it could very well be um, uh, also uh, adapted to other countries. Uh, I mean, in Malawi, you also teach in English, so uh, that already opens uh, a lot of borders. Um, but these are just prospects, and uh, our team is very still very small. So, uh, but these are definitely, uh, yeah, possibilities. I would say. Right, I'm, I'm James. Um, I'm from London. Um, just thank you for your fantastic presentation. I think it was brilliant. Uh, the work you're doing in Malawi. My question um, has to do with the continuous professional development of the teachers. Um, you mentioned that the Chancellor University are supporting the teachers so that they can you know, be in a position to sustain the project. And we know that funding is very, very difficult in Africa. So how are the universities going to work with the schools to support this project when it comes to funding, how are they going to sustain it? Uh, of course, thanks. Now, uh, yeah, of course, uh, funding is is an issue for those projects in general. Um, uh, currently, we are uh, we with the funding that we have. There's um, uh, there's a certain term in which we can we can do this now. Of course, we are working with the Chancellor College now to, f to find more funding. So this is uh, also something that we are working on. For the short term, it is, uh, it is covered. Um, but yes, it's, it's, it's a bit, um, of course, difficult to, um, uh, to always find funding for this project. We, um, we are uh, working on this. We are also happy for suggestions on this. Um, but uh, for the Chancellor College, we're just starting small now and building it up. So that as soon as we have the the proper funding, we can we can uh, make it uh, okay. um, more extensive. And Thanks we all also have three schools at the moment. So this is currently working out. And also um, on this matter, I think it's also very important to say that uh, schools, of course, at the end should be as autonomous as possible. Um, so they don't need to be uh, training sessions every week, um, only once in a while. Uh, and they can also be conducted with a lot of schools, or they could in the future also be conducted via web streams or they could also uh, be included in, uh, for example, LabDo also offers a lot of uh, really useful um, uh, guidance and uh, learning videos on, on this matter. So this also enables uh, yeah, teachers to learn and to build new skills. So there's uh, not that regularity in um, yeah, really active training sessions needed. Okay, we are now five minutes in the coffee break, so you are losing your time to have a coffee. I think all other questions you should uh, discuss with uh, the attendees then in uh, individual talks. And we have a coffee and some refreshments over there, if you want. We come back in uh, 50 minutes, 20 minutes, so see you soon.
yang after mereka kita harus bukan tapi harus kita harus kita harus kita harus kita Das glaube ich auch. Also ich bin übrigens auch in Malawi unterwegs. Ah, und deshalb habe ich, ich bin ein bisschen spät gekommen, das weil ich eigentlich jetzt noch nicht so viel gekriegt. Ja. Ähm, aber das habe ich auch festgestellt. Also Punkt 1, die erste Laptop, die ich runtergebracht habe, da waren die Lehrer total fertig mhm. von, von dieser, von dieser äh, Late Rachel ja. Database. Weil das, also zu ja. auch so viel Wissen ja. eigentlich niemals gab. Ja. Und aber kein Internet, ähm, mhm. auch keine Chance darauf. Ja. Und ähm, das zweite ist natürlich, da haben sich zwei, drei Lehrer darum gekümmert, der mhm. Mathelehrer und, und äh, noch zwei ja. ähm, Junge und, und ja, die fanden das halt spannend. Ich habe mhm. dann auch so eine Solaranlage installiert ja, und, und das läuft ja. das irgendwie. Ja. Ähm, dann an so einem Jugendzentrum, äh, da ist das wieder anders. Da, ähm, keine Ahnung, da sind die dann halt so sich selbst überlassen und der andere ja. spielt dies und der andere spielt mhm. das, aber da, man braucht eine Anleitung, weil ja, die muss ja. irgendwie eine Struktur genau, da sein. Ja. Ne? Ja. Sonst, sonst, sonst ist es so ja. für, für Self-Study schwierig. Das stimmt, ja. ja. Und auch wenn man, also es ist immer, immer gut, wenn man so Champions hat an den Schulen, die das alles leiten. Ja. Ähm, aber im Endeffekt will man ja auch nicht nur die erreichen, die eh schon computeraffin sind, sondern auch die, die sich ja, damit noch genau, nicht so auskennen. Ganz ja. genau, genau. Und ja. die haben auch gesagt, ähm, also die von Secondary School, die hat so Computer in der Richtung äh, letztes Jahr und dieses Jahr, ähm, wenn die schon überhaupt mhm. wissen, wie ein Laptop aussieht und ja. eingeschaltet wird, dann haben sie schon mal einen, einen super Start ja. in die Universität. Ja. Weil die meisten, die da ankommen, haben ja. nie einen Computer in der Hand gehabt. Ne? Ja. Ja, wir, wir können euch gerade mal zeigen, was gerade unser Plan ist, wie wir das so ein bisschen versuchen wollen, super intuitiv zu machen, ähm, damit wirklich auch Leute von vor Ort, also das ist jetzt gerade nur ein, äh, ein Entwurf, ähm, den wir jetzt gestern fertig gemacht haben, also wo wir weg. Ja, das ist vorstellen. genau, was er jetzt in der Präsentation gesagt hat, dass ja, vielleicht sollten wir ein bisschen den Inhalt äh, strukturieren, ja, weil wir genau, haben ja. alle diese Rachel ja. und dann das und das und es ist alles äh, genau, ja. genau. genau, es ist ja. alles da, aber, aber ja. Ja. Ist ja. Ja. nicht user-friendly. Genau, und da haben wir auch... Das, was ist das? Das habt ihr ja jetzt gemacht. Das ist ein neues Interface, genau. das ist quasi der erste Entwurf dafür. Ja. Die Idee ist, dass man einfach alle Contents ganz einfach von einem Interface ja. abrufen kann. Genau, das ist der super ja. und, das ähm, ist super. Ja. Es geht ja. natürlich darum, dass es intuitiv wie möglich ist und wir haben jetzt auch mit einer, mit einer professionellen Webagentur zusammengearbeitet, damit ah. es wirklich also okay. auch professionell gemacht ist und ja. dann auch ein gescheites Template hat. Und die Idee ist jetzt wirklich, ja. dass ah. man... Ähm, ah, nee. Dass Nein, man du hier Deutsch, ähm, genau. also Deutsch. quasi die Deutsch. Themenbereiche hat mhm. und wenn man hier reingeht, dann die verschiedenen äh, ja, Unterthemen hat ja. und wirklich da den, äh, äh, ja, ja. Wir sind, wir äh, sind den angepassten Themen an die Bereiche hat. Und dann kann ein Lehrer wirklich, wenn er kommt, sagen, okay, oder ein Schüler, Chemistry. Das ist euer eigenes, oder? Genau, ja. Warum okay. müssen wir Platz machen? Nein, nein, ja, ja, wir suchen den anderen. Ah, wir, wir, wir können nicht. Die Frage ist nur, wo ist der Präsentationslaptop? So. Ah, den Alpha, den bestimmt. Genau. Ähm, ja. Also, das sind quasi die Einstieg da. Dann noch Einstieg nach vor. Da kann man auch sehr easy machen. Und ja, dann, das ist das, genau. Und dann natürlich so die Standardsachen. Perfekt. Ähm, und ich sag mal, Wikipedia bringt auch super viel. Ja. Aber ich denke gerade halt an Contents, die zusammengesucht sind aus den Open Educational Resource Plattformen, die dann auch wirklich äh, vor Ort an, äh, quasi vorliegen, ist wichtig. Ja. Und ein anderes Ziel ist dann, dass man quasi Lehrern wirklich Skripte gibt ja. ähm, und sagt, in der Stunde, wo es in Bio um Photosynthese geht, mhm. da könnt ihr erst das Video zeigen, mhm. dann könnt ihr sie äh, vor die Simulation setzen und dann in die und die Aufgabe geben, also das dass man wirklich super. klare, klare an, an, äh, Anweisungen gibt, weil ähm, ja, in 
Und also Malawi Niklas ist online learn plattform Genau, ja. Also bei Malawi sind die Lehrer auch nichts anderes gewohnt bisher. Nee, nee. Ja. Ja. Genau, also das habt ihr das so selber Ziel. entwickelt? Oder? Ähm, ja, zusammen mit der Webagentur. Okay. Da haben wir ja, auch, äh, ähm, ist das Open Source, zum Beispiel kennt ihr Laptop auch? Oder, oder ja, also da können wir auf jeden Fall drüber sprechen. Es ist noch nicht fertig, wir okay. arbeiten immer noch dran, aber das Ziel ist, also wir wollen nicht unsere Sachen äh, behalten ja. und, und bunkern. Also da können wir mhm. gerne auch überlegen, wie, okay. wie, 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 wie man das gemeinsam benutzen könnte. Und das sehr, ist, sehr gerne. In, was ist das gemacht? Also mit Material WordPress. Ah, ah, genau, also okay. suchen wir auch quasi Open Source, damit auch ja. äh, man ja. das auf jedem Laptop theoretisch im Endeffekt ja, äh, installieren kann. Ja. 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 Ähm, und ein Ziel von uns ist eben, ähm, also wir sind wirklich Riesenfans von Laptop, Absu äh, absolut. Ähm, wir, wir haben nur ein bisschen anderen Ansatz und unser Ansatz ist quasi, dass wir nicht den ganzen Content können auf Klaro ja. Genau, aber du wolltest es hier einmal testen. Ja, wolltest du mal testen, nur kurz testen? Genau, das ist hier der HDMI. Das bollert da so. Okay, wir schon drauf. Also das geht so. Okay, jetzt können wir uns... Und die Frage ist noch vorwärts und rückwärts. Ähm, das hier. Okay. Moment, jetzt fehlt mir hier der Funk. Moment. Wer hat mir den geklaut? Da liegt noch einer. Ich weiß ja nicht, wer redet jetzt als nächstes. Also mit dem, mit dem ist geht es auf jeden Fall. Ja. 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 Also dann können wir meine zumachen. Und ob das Video hinterher läuft, das werden wir dann sehen. Das müsste eigentlich laufen. Und das ist innerhalb der powerpoint zeit Aber mach du mal. Was lange drin ist. Ja, alles andere bitte an ihn. Ist schon, der neue Link ist schon draußen bei Facebook. Ich stehe hier Schlange. Ich stehe hier also, ja. Nur nicht unter der, nur auf einem anderen, ganz anderen Link. Ja, ja, Im Dokument ist es drin und bei Facebook ja, ja. online. Ja, Mehr kann man im Moment nicht machen. Bettet, Aber alles andere, äh, in, in, dem, in dem Google Doc ist es drin und bei Facebook ist es drin. Nee, gerade nicht. <lacht> gerade nicht, wirklich nicht. Ähm, welche möchtest du? Das MP4. Ja. Und? Das MP4 muss rüber. Ja. Und die PDF. Die PDF. Die beiden. Da bin ich glücklich. Okay, sollte drin Wir sein. Testen. Wir machen das nachher so, wenn du dann, wenn du dann äh, die, den, das Video abspielst, ja. muss ich ähm, hier einmal das verkabeln. Dann läuft das hier drüber und dann legen wir ein Mikro vorne vor, damit die Kamera Ton hat. Ein bisschen, okay. bisschen äh, auspacken. Egal. Ja, ja, aber geht nicht anders. Dann. Das Mikrofon ist an. Ja, ja. Bei uns ist alles öffentlich. Sollen wir das wegmachen, damit du nicht äh, online bist? Das Bild wegmachen? Ist vielleicht besser, oder? Jetzt sieht es nämlich wieder. Komm her, ich ziehe das ab. Also sonst sieht jeder, was du da ja, fummelst. Ja. Das stimmt. Dann machen wir Slideshow. Das Slide. Und die Taste B, ja. Geht auch. B ist Black, oder? Die B-Taste geht auch, ja. 
Willst du den? Willst du so sprechen? Oder mm, du ich glaube, Hand? das ist mehr in der Hand. Das ich lieber in der Hand? Also es war jetzt, fand ich besser, wenn die Leute auch ein bisschen ja, mit der Gäste... Sonst muss das Ding sehr dick. Also ja, die ich Frau, die stand so gebückt da. Da hat es noch eins, glaube ich. Aber ich weiß nicht, ob das... Warte mal. Test, 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 jawohl. Ja, ich habe es gesehen. Muss man schon. Hallo, das ist... Ich rede frei, ich rede so und mit der anderen Hand könnt ihr das Test. vorblättern. Vor zurück. Mit dem kann ich vor und zurück. Ah, okay. Ich stelle es einfach hin. Oh. Rechts also links. Vor. links ist zurück. Ah, ich habe es extra weggemacht. Ah, okay. So, okay, jetzt sollen wir nochmal schnell durchgehen. Ja. Mhm. Die hören ja mit hier. Also wir fangen dann an. Dann sage ich ganz kurz, 40 Jahre IT, man ist da nicht so. Da haben wir angefangen. Mhm. First Workshop, Growing Number. So wir Contest dafür. This is how we do it today. And the object is it's not only the techniques, and it's also the, the whole organization. Mm -hmm. And then we say we split in workstation teams, and you will explain later. And I will say that we will do this together. Okay, okay. Let's yeah. mm -hmm. And let you as a country. Mm -hmm. Gamification. As you can see in the field, in the Sanitized. And then I give you the issue this word to you. Okay. And you does. Also du meinst du nachher auf den Prozess, wo wir nachher können in Detail zeigen können? Ja, ja, morgen beim Workshop. Ah, ja, okay. Wir haben ja jetzt einen Vorschlag, dass wir das erklären. Das ja, und dann komme da komm ich wieder hoch, okay. ich stehe hinter Gut. dir, muss man gucken, wie wir das machen. Gut. Mal gucken, ob wir das zum Laufen kriegen. Das ist ja auch, 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 auch mir jetzt auf dem Rechner drauf, oder? Ja, ja, ist eigentlich embedded, ist aber ich sehe eben noch... Das ist jetzt eben nicht mehr der richtige Rechner, oder? Vielleicht geht es eben... Vielleicht müssen wir es einfach als Bild stehen lassen. Mm, nee. Ja. Wenn das dein Rechner wäre, würde es sicher funktionieren, ja, ja. aber... Äh, das geht nicht. Das geht nicht. Das ist weil, die, weil die Power, die hat nämlich 32 Megabyte, aber ah, Giga, da habe ich gedacht, ja, ja. wir müssen... Okay, dann geht es ja, nicht. Dann muss halt... Das Bild, oder? Ja gut, das ist auch gut. Also das, wenn keine Fragen sind, dann sagen wir, das sind die... Das ist schade. Mhm. schade, dass das nicht geht. Ne? Ja, ja. Ja. Mhm. Okay. Gut. Kriegen wir das in einer halben Stunde, 25 Minuten, kriegen wir durch, oder? Ja, ja. Jetzt haben wir eine halbe Stunde. Ja. Wir haben eine halbe Stunde. Wir haben eine okay. halbe Stunde, ja. Das Vielleicht noch fünf Minuten Fragen an. Ja, ja. Okay. Und das haben wir. Und äh, tun wir jetzt vorne, tun wir jetzt vorne Mittag oder nach dem Mittag? Das wissen wir noch nicht. Ja. Wir stehen eigentlich vor Mittag. Wir wären 12.30 Uhr. Es geht um die Pause, geht bis halb. Ja. Die anderen eine Stunde.